Thanks. Hey, I'm coming to you from the cabana and I'm here with Baxter. Baxter is a dog who is created to love. What a good thing that God created dogs. Uh, I wanted to show you Baxter. He's almost 12 years old now uh, and tell you about something going on with him. Baxter, you can get down now. He's not allowed up here because he sheds, uh, but Nancy's gone, so he's here. Uh, he's got a little sore on his body right now. He's going to be fine. We took him to the vet and we're going through treatments. But uh, they gave us this cone to put on him and he's had to wear it before. We always call it the cone of shame because it's a strange thing. It looks like a dunce cap. He looks really goofy when he has it on. And for some reason when he wears it, it's almost like he feels like he's done something wrong. And his head will hang down low and there's no bounce in his step. And... He just walks around as though he is defeated and discouraged. And so somehow, somewhere, Nancy was able to find this time a little collar of grace so that that's that little blue thing he had on. It protects him. It keeps him from doing more damage to himself as long as he has this sore, as long as he has this wound. It will be better. It will be healed. But now he doesn't have to wear the cone of shame anymore. And I was thinking about how deeply shame weighs on human life. There's a story in the Bible in Genesis in the third chapter about how Adam and Eve, who initially were made to live with no shame, they were naked, they were vulnerable, they were fully known, but they were not ashamed. And then came the fall and they chose to push God out of their lives like we all do and they knew shame and so they hid and that's what we all do. And there's a very poignant verse at the end of that passage in Genesis 3 where it says, and God put cherubim, set cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to protect the way to the tree of life. And I wonder sometimes, you know, that, that image of a flashing light, uh, for some reason, is always a sign of warning or danger at a stoplight, a flashing light. Or if, if you've ever been in a car, I sure have, and had those lights flashing behind you, that's not a good sign. Flashing lights often mean danger, warning, and I think of shame some, sometimes that way. I don't know how it is for you. I got a note from a very, very good friend. He's a pastor, and uh, every story is different, but he also, like me, had a story of having to leave a church under difficult circumstances and to figure out how to understand and <laughs> figure out, to figure out how do I understand this? And how do I learn to look at what are the wrong things that I have done? What are the people that I have hurt? And how might I make it better with them? How do I need to change? To be willing to sit in the pain of that, but not wallow in it. Not despair because of it. Not indulge in self-pity. Not cycle down into rumination, which I can often do. And I can't make myself get that right. I was so... Um, inspired by my friend, what he wrote, where he was willing to look really honestly at, um, yep, there is stuff that is wrong with me that I'm aware of and, and lots more stuff that I don't even know yet and way more than what other people might know or think. So to let go of that, to mostly not worry about what other people are thinking of me, but not just to have the goal of not feeling bad. The goal of life is not just to eliminate the feelings of pain, guilt, and shame. It's to become a different kind of person where I'm now living and walking with God. And so, and so, and so, one day, there were shepherds abiding in a field, keeping watch over their flocks by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Now, I, I think about those, those cherubim uh, angels who had to guard the way, whatever that means, whatever spirituality, whatever spiritual reality that that's um, communicating, and now there's an angel who comes with not a flashing light, but glory that shines, that glows. And they were terrified, as we all are, when it comes to God and what is beautiful and good. And the angel says, don't be afraid. That's the message to you today. Don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all the people, everybody. For you is born this day a Savior. He can do what you can't. He can take away what you cannot remove. He can heal the wound that would otherwise be fatal to you. 
and this will be a sign you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Now, shepherds were kind of at the low end of the status ladder. And so they were people that would have a keen sense of inadequacy. It'd be a little like if you were a shepherd and you were told, you know, uh, go to the White House because uh, the president, uh, the, the uh, executive family just had a baby or something. You'd never get in. So uh, that thought that a Messiah is born, they're not going to be able to see him. But this, this sign, it'll be okay. He's coming in a manger. He's taking away your shame. And then if that one angel was too much, there's a multitude of the heavenly hosts. And the picture there is this is the army of God. It's a word that was, could be used for soldiers, but now they don't come with swords and spears and chariots. Um, their weapons are worship and praise. And there's a, a wonderful uh, homily reflection on this by Gregory the Great, a pope of about 1,500 years ago. And he's reflecting on what's happening with the incarnation, the coming of Jesus. And he says, before the Redeemer was born in the flesh, there was discord between us and the angels based on that passage in Genesis, the flashing light, keep them out. Because through sin, we had become strangers to God. The angels, as God's subjects, cut us off from their fellowship. Because the King of Heaven, now, because the King of Heaven has taken unto Himself the flesh of our earth, the angels from their heavenly heights no longer look down upon our infirmity. Now they are at peace with us, putting away the remembrance of ancient discord, the flashing sword, Christ brings heaven and earth into harmony, Mike Barber writes. The presence of the heavenly host singing peace to the shepherds manifest this. That's the good news. Now, how do we respond? What do we do? Well, I've been struck by a couple of stories when Jesus brings healing to people. He does it to a man that had been paralyzed for 38 years. And then when the man is healed, Jesus says to him, pick up your mat, make your bed. And then later on in the book of Acts, after Jesus is resurrected and ascends into heaven, Peter is able, uh, through the name of Jesus, to bring healing to a man who had been lame, paralyzed for eight years. And Peter gives him exactly the same instruction. Pick up your mat. Make your bed. And it struck me in both cases, there's something about healing that then leads Jesus in the kingdom to say, now I want you to take action. I want you to do one little thing that will be quite simple for you to do, but it will be a way for you to recognize and to testify for people around you. I am no longer stuck where I was before. I am now a new person. I'm able to do a new life. Um, uh, there was a, it can be very easy to get paralyzed if you've been on a mat for a long time. Shame and inactivity makes my world very small. People sometimes think that grace of God means that I do nothing. No, 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 no. Grace is power. And it leads us to get up off of the very small world of our mat and to begin to do things, usually with real small steps, things that don't look terribly significant. There was a book that ended up becoming a number one bestseller in the New York Times. And it was based on a... Um, commencement speech by Admiral McCraven. He talked about when he was a Navy SEAL, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is get out of bed and then you make your bed. And he said, it sounds like such a trivial small thing, but he came to recognize over time that it was a really good thing to learn how to do, that they would inspect that every day because you would recognize, if I do this one small thing and it gives me a little sense of accomplishment, then I can do the next small thing. And then I can do the next small thing. And one by one, as I walk through the day, it will be a life of good small things that I can do. And you and I can do that together with God. And he said, part of what that teaches us is the value of small things, that little things matter. And that's not just a cliche, that's the incarnation. Little things matter because God created all things, including little things and lowly people in small acts of good and God inhabits them. The message of the manger is God inhabits small things. He is there. And then Admiral McRaven says, if by chance you have a miserable day, at least when you come home at night, you will come home to a made bed. And it will be a little reminder that perhaps tomorrow will be a better day. 
So today, you do not live in shame, you don't live in guilt, you don't live in pain. Those may come to you, you may, I may need to learn from them. How do I need your help to change God? What do I need to make right? Who have I hurt? How can I reach out to them? But then I don't wallow, I don't get stuck, I don't live there. There is peace. There is not a flashing light uh, outside that rear window. The glory of the Lord shines around you. Jesus is with you. You have been forgiven. There is peace. You are healed. Get up. Make your bed. Write that email. Make that call. Clean that desk. One small step that reminds you. Now it's you and Jesus. You are not alone. Hey, thanks for joining us. To receive a text alert when new episodes are released, you can text the word BECOME to the number 855-888-0444. You can also send prayer requests there, and we would love to pray for you. To receive the emails that go along with each video, let us know at becomenew.me slash subscribe. Special thanks to Matthew Custer for the art and design for this series. See you next time.